Over the last seven to eight years as a full-time software developer, my primary keyboard has been an Apple Magic Keyboard in one form or another. I've used the bigger 10 key versions and the 10 key list, the older one that took the batteries and the newer one that's slimmer that has the internal battery. Even though I personally like a 10 key keyboard for typing numbers, I ended up going with the smaller version for a couple of reasons. The first one being that the keyboard layout is pretty much identical to the keyboard on my MacBook Pros, which just makes it a lot less jarring by having that continuity. Though this is not totally true because with the newer M1 MacBook Pros, the right and left arrows are a little bit shorter and are bottom aligned, but it is still close enough to be a pretty seamless experience. And it's still a perfect fit for my other 15 inch MacBook Pro. The second reason is that it's really nice to have a lot of extra space for the mouse instead of having to reach way over to the side to move my mouse around. I really like the look of the Magic Keyboard. It is sleek and has a nice form factor. I've used several at different companies and at home and I've never had one fail. That said, for the last couple of months, I have been trying out the Logitech MX Keys keyboard full time. I really wanted to get some actual experience with this keyboard before making a review video to make sure I had enough time to actually get used to it. Before I jump into the pros and cons of each keyboard, here are the reasons why I wanted to try a new keyboard in the first place. First, one thing that I really noticed after a long period of typing on the Apple Magic Mouse is that the side of my right thumb would start to get sore and agitated. I think it's because my thumb hits the same spot over and over again, compared to my other fingers that tend to move around in a bunch of different positions hitting different keys, combined with the fact that the keys are really short, and so it's pretty easy to bottom out. I really like short keys because I think they look good and there's the shorter travel, and I'm hoping that another keyboard like the MX Keys will have just a tiny bit more height to maybe pad that a little bit and hopefully help reduce that pain that I feel in my thumb. I have not used a mechanical keyboard since high school, and to be honest, I'm a little bit turned off by the loud clicky sound that they make, but I really am curious to know, those of you who are using mechanical keyboards, do you also experience any kind of thumb pain from hitting the space bar? Definitely let me know in the comments below, that'd be super appreciated. The second reason that I wanna try the MX keys is because the Apple Magic keyboard only pairs to one device, and so I actually have two of them one for my work laptop and one for my personal laptop because it'd be super annoying having to constantly be switching the keyboard and pairing it to the different laptops each time I wanted to switch out which computer I'm working on. I also recently got an iPad Pro and I sometimes will be doing typing on it, not a lot, but I just don't wanna spend the money to get the Magic Keyboard that is designed specifically for the iPad and I'm not super thrilled to have a third keyboard on my desk. The MX Keys is nice because it gives you the option to pair to three different devices and switching between the devices is as simple as hitting one of these three keys. This works great, but I have noticed that there is a little bit of lag each time you switch which device you're connected to before it initially starts picking up your other keystrokes. And this is something that just happens right after switching between devices. It's not a lag that you experience in general when you start typing. One of the downsides though is that there have been a couple times where I have forgotten which laptop I am actually connected to and I start typing and I think, oh, it's not showing up. Maybe it was just a lag only to realize that I had accidentally typed a comment into Slack on my work computer and hit enter and sent some weird strange message to one of my coworkers. And then I hurry and go delete it, hopefully before they see it and wonder what the heck is going on. Yep, true story. And that's not something that ever happened with the Magic Keyboard for obvious reasons. Another key difference is the shape of the keys. On the MX keys, there's a little depression on each of the keys. And this was a little bit strange at first and felt kind of weird for me and, and took some time to get used to. But I have now noticed that over time, when I'm just resting my hand on the keyboard, my fingers tend to gravitate towards the center of the keys because that is where it is most comfortable. On the Magic Keyboard, the keys are flat, so there is a tendency sometimes to get a little bit off center, which hasn't been a huge problem. But sometimes when I start to type, I might accidentally hit the wrong key or miss because my fingers are not centered. And one of the things that I really appreciate about the MX Keys is that it has a Mac layout so that I can get the actual keys that I'm used to in the locations that I'm used to rather than having to do some sort of you know mapping of keys and having them be in weird places. Aesthetically, both are very pleasing to look at. And in fact, the MX Keys has the space gray look that really matches well with my laptops and also has the same kind of like look and feel of the space gray version of the 10 key. 
Apple Magic Keyboard that I've used previously. The keyboard is also really thin, except for the top section that is a little bit thicker than the Magic Keyboard, which does result in the typing experience having a slightly steeper angle. But that hasn't really been much of a problem for me. That top section though does add a little bit of weight and when you compare the two side by side, it is definitely clear that the MX Keys is heavier than the Magic Keyboard and it is something that you'd probably notice if you were to be putting the uh, keyboard in your backpack and carrying it around. The Magic Keyboard is definitely much lighter. At first I thought maybe this weight difference was due to the MX Keys having a bigger and better battery than the Apple Magic Keyboards, but I'm not totally sure on this because I don't know the specs of the batteries and I have noticed that I have to recharge the MX Keys keyboard much more regularly than I do the Apple keyboard. That said, the MX Keys is nice because you recharge it using a USB-C cable instead of the lightning cable that you use on the Magic Keyboard. So it's easy for me to switch out which device I'm charging because my other devices also use the USB-C ports. The likely culprit for the lower battery life is probably the fact that the MX Keys is backlit. If you move your fingers close to the keys, the backlight turns on, and when you move them away after a couple seconds, that turns off. You do not get that on the Apple Magic Keyboard. There is no backlit functionality, but this can be an advantage, especially if you're using the MX keys in a darker room. I've definitely found that very useful. As for my actual user experience with this keyboard, I definitely think that this is a great option for those who are looking for an alternative to the Apple Magic Keyboards, especially in that situation where you want to be pairing to multiple devices. One of the things that I do wish was that they made a version that was 10 keyless so that I could get that space back for my mouse. As for the pain issue, I noticed the difference in height of the two keys, even though the MX keys is still a low profile keyboard without a lot of travel. And it does feel like that the pain and discomfort I'm feeling has become less frequent but it does still happen. Maybe a mechanical keyboard is the way to go. Who knows? Let me know in the comments below your suggestion and check out this video up here where I compare the MX Master 3 mouse to the Apple Magic Mouse or this video here where I attempt to do programming on an iPad. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Late.